News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Jay Cohn. The Lockwood School District could include a high school as soon as 2021. Tonight, the Lockwood School Board of Trustees discussed the nearly $50 million bond proposal that residents would vote on in May. Q2's Dustin Kleeman was at that meeting tonight in Lockwood and joins us here now to bring us more on the big project. Dustin. Good evening, Jay and Janelle. Lockwood is one of the fastest growing communities in the state. The high school is the dream for Lockwood School District and they want to make it a reality. Trustees unanimously approved asking voters for the bond in May. Here are some conceptual plans to what it would look like. The cost to an a residential value home, average one, $180,000 is $22 a month. Now, plans include building a 700 student school, along with 700 student auditorium and 3,000 person gym. Officials have worked on making the project one Lockwood could be proud of, and it wouldn't be too burdensome for taxpayers. Our hope is that this is a project that we've designed this high school so it's viable in 25 to 50 years. It's still going to be what we need. We're not going to have to go back to the taxpayers in five or 10 years and ask for an upgrade to any of the facilities. Um, we've really tried to take a long-term uh, approach with this including the cost of, of operation and maintenance. Again, $22 per month for the average taxpayer. They will decide in May with the earliest classes beginning in 2021. Lockwood is also examining updating its security and safety system for the district. Jane Janelle. All right, thank you very much, Dustin. Well, tonight, Billings School District 2 Superintendent Terry Bauck says the district supports student plans to walk out of class on March 14th. A planned walkout to bring attention to the recent Florida shooting will last for 17 minutes. That's one minute for each shooting victim. Superintendent Bauck tonight briefed the school board on the district's preparation for the student protest. He said he has already held three meetings with staff and administrators and told the board that safety is the district's top priority. Bauck also stressed tonight that School District 2 is not taking a political stance by preparing for the protest, but said students do have the right to express their opinions. Hopefully this is gonna be a teachable moment. I'm going to revert back for those of you in the media that might not have heard this. We don't support any political side. Our focus is safety. Now, Bog said he anticipates more meetings as the district prepares for the March 14th event. Tomorrow, for instance, he will meet with student leaders from each of the city's high schools. Superintendent Bauck also is preparing a letter that will be sent out to all parents explaining the situation and how school administrators are planning for the nationwide protest. President Trump met with governors of 39 states at the White House today to discuss a range of topics, including gun control and school safety. Wei Zhejiang has the latest from the White House. At a meeting with the nation's governors Monday, President Trump suggested he would have stepped up to help during the Florida school shooting on Valentine's Day. I really believe I'd run in there even if I didn't have a weapon. And I think most of the people in this room would have done that, too. The president took particular aim at former school resource deputy Scott Peterson for not entering the high school to confront the gunman. He wasn't a brave guy under pressure. He choked. In a statement, Peterson's attorney said the first call his client received was a report of firecrackers and not gunfire. And when he actually heard shots, he believed they were coming from outside. Consistent with his training, the attorney says Peterson took up a tactical position between two buildings. President Trump said he'd ban bump stocks, which help semi-automatic guns fire faster without the help of Congress. He also advocated once again for arming teachers. We have to take steps to harden our schools so that they're less vulnerable to attack. This includes allowing well-trained and certified school personnel to carry concealed firearm. It's, at some point, you need volume. Washington Governor Jay Inslee, a Democrat, challenged the idea. I just suggest we need a little less tweeting here, a little more listening, and let's just take that off the table and move forward. President Trump made no mention of raising the age limit for gun purchases during the meeting, but the White House says he still supports the idea, which the NRA does not. We Jang, CBS News, the White House. Now the White House says President Trump will meet Wednesday with a bipartisan group of lawmakers to discuss ways of addressing gun violence. At that governor's meeting today, Montana Governor Steve Bullock got some time behind the microphone questioning the president about arming teachers and reflecting on his own personal loss from a school shooting. 
Um, I approach it as a gun owner. That 11-year-old son got his first deer right. uh, this past fall. He's a good boy. I approach it as a victim. I had a nephew shot and killed an 11-year-old on a playground. 43 times since I've been governor, I've been asked to lower the flags. 12 of them have been for mass shootings in the last five years. It's much more, as I think you recognize, and just carrying concealed, that they have that training that I, as a parent, can say that this person, under pressure, will know what to do with a firearm before we start introducing the firearms into our schools. Uh, you mentioned uh, two words, under pressure. And a lot of people never really know what that means because, you know, they train a whole life. Look at Peterson. Look what he did in Broward where he thought he was probably a brave guy, but he wasn't a brave guy under pressure. He choked, and other people choked. I mean, a lot of people choked in that case. The Marjorie Stoneman Douglas students, by the way, are expected to return to their school tomorrow. A murder investigation is underway in Hardin, where one of three women beat with a frying pan has died. That assault happened earlier this month, leaving the victim hospitalized for more than two weeks. Q2's Asia Gore broke this story earlier today and joins us tonight with more details. Asia? Jane Janelle, the suspect has already been charged with three counts of felony assault, but tomorrow he'll face a new charge of deliberate homicide. 22-year-old James Brian is being held at the Bighorn County Jail on a $1 million bond. The sheriff's office first received a report February 8th of an assault at a hardened trailer. A witness told deputies Brian bragged to her that he, quote, laid three girls out with a frying pan. The witness said she found all three women at the trailer unconscious. When deputies arrived, they found one victim with a bloody face. Another was conscious at first, but then passed out on the couch. That victim, a woman in her 40s, was transported to a Billings hospital and placed on life support. She died from her injuries Saturday night. A motive for the assault was not identified in court documents. Jane Janelle. Thanks, Asia. And the victim's name, Asia tells us, has not been released yet. A victory for dreamers and a setback for the Trump administration in the ongoing battle over the future of immigrants brought to this country illegally. The Supreme Court rejected a request from the Trump administration to consider the fate of DAC, the DACA program before an appeals court takes up the case. Now, this decision virtually ensures that the controversial program will remain in effect past its March 5th deadline. President Trump says the Obama administration exceeded executive powers when it created DACA. A retired Yellowstone County Justice of the Peace now being sued for ordering a man's arrest over his immigration status. That's the claim filed by Miguel Hernandez against former Justice Pedro Hernandez. The plaintiff was attending a court hearing with his wife when the woman's cousin told the judge that he was in the country illegally. Judge Hernandez allegedly ordered the man's arrest and Miguel Hernandez was subsequently taken and then held at a detention center in Tacoma, Washington for nearly three months. The lawsuit contends that state judges do not have the authority to uphold immigration law. That, they say, is a federal issue. Miguel Hernandez, who was married to a Billings woman, eventually was released. The case against him dismissed. This lawsuit seeks an unspecified amount of damages. On the weather scene, the time has come, Bob. As much as we love this warm-up, we don't <laughs> like the ice jams that come with it. Yeah, and it happens in February and March, so we are right there. And Montana has the most ice jams out of any other state in the 48 contiguous states. And that was like 76, 75 in 1996. That was the most we've had. But more recently, we've had 23 back in 2011. So let's talk about these ice jams. And as you can see, they cause flooding. That has always been our problem. And they happen recently when recent cold snap accumulates ice on the rivers. Now, also, ice jams can also uh, create ice dams, which causes lowland flooding because the water has to go someplace, and sometimes it just goes right out of the river. And in the meantime, here's what you'll see. Waterways will need time to stabilize to newly formed ice, and that sometimes can take one to two weeks. That's right. It takes that long sometimes. Ice jams can also cause rapid rises in waters with little, no warning, so it's a good idea to go ahead and move the equipment and livestock to higher ground, like what they've done here. These cement trucks, they were moved to the higher ground as well. Our forecast is talking about a warm-up. Just how warm will it go? We'll talk about it coming up in a few more minutes. All right, thanks, Bob. Well, it's winter time's equivalent to the rain in Spain, Italy, now introducing the world to snow in Rome. An Arctic storm passed over much of Europe, and Romans awoke to a winter wonderland. Now, the event so rare, the last time it snowed, anything measurable was in 2012. 
As commuters and normal city thoroughfare came to a halt, citizens took the opportunity to indulge in snow play. Now, take a note, several subway and train stations were converted into makeshift gathering spots for the city's homeless population. Loved seeing the Coliseum there wow. in snow. Coming up in tonight's Q2 Rewind, we check out a transportation trend that rolled through the Magic City in Montana and left a lasting impact around the state. Plus, it was an exciting time up at Big Sky today as Montana's own Olympians hit the snow. And coming up later in sports tonight, the final pieces are in place for this week's state basketball tournaments. Scott shows us who survives this challenge between Bridger and Melstone. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Green. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.